Welcome everyone to Spare Eggs Media. I hope y'all are as ready for the spring showcase as I am. Because that's what we're waiting on. It's just two short days away. We will be there. Um, Subject in lot five. I will be kind of all over the place. Um, but for the majority of the time, it should be around lot five. But we will see. You have bought tickets to the tailgate. By all means, do come through and check everything out. We have a huge amount of players coming through, former, current. Michael Offord's coming out. Um, we've got a couple of the coaches that said they're going to try to walk out there with us. Um, so it should be a really good time, really good people to meet. Um, a lot of times uh, the fans that do come, they say, I would have never got to meet this person if you wouldn't have had them out here. Y'all wouldn't have had this or whatever. So if you haven't bought tickets yet, do so. If you just see us walking around, you see me dealing with a whole bunch of people. Don't be, don't be shy. You can say something. Um, I'll do. Excuse me. I will do my best to talk to everyone. Uh, these are extremely busy for me, but it is what it is. I enjoy it nonetheless. So regardless of how busy I seem or how busy that I am, that doesn't really matter. Make sure that you say something to us. Um, obviously, the transfer portal has kicked off. And a lot of people are wondering what it is that Florida State's looking for as far as the transfer portal goes. Um, well, first question is, is who's leaving? We've talked about that on two different episodes. And some of those guys that we named that we anticipated could be one that would leave, like Jackson West, he's not going anywhere. Um, he's actually healthy. Um they like what he does as when he's healthy. So Jackson West isn't going anywhere. Um, outside of that, I don't think anybody else uh, that we named has been assured that they're not leaving as far as based off of NIL deals or being announced as this, that, or the other. So all the rest of them are still up for the possibility. Um, so we'll see what happens. But you've got some uh, that are already put in Florida State in their top schools that they want to potentially go to. Um, in Florida State, where I don't know if everyone knows this or not, but because Atkins gave a kid a ride on a golf cart um, to a meeting supposedly on campus, like I don't know that our coach knows that they're meeting someone, but anyway, we were given, you know, our uh, punishment. And part of that punishment is, is that 415 through 421, we are not allowed to talk to any of the transfer portal guys. None of them. No contact. So, how do I say this the right way? Mike don't need it. Everybody thinks they're getting a weak head start, and really, you're still behind because a lot of these guys aren't entering the portal until they know Florida State can contact them because they don't want to miss out. And that's the honest guy's truth. There's been multiple players say that they plan on entering the portal, but they're not doing it until next week because of this reason. Um, but there are some that have jumped in and put their top two schools out. Uh, looking at Jacoby Matthew from Texas A&M, he has two schools that he's looking at, Oregon and Florida State. So we assume that he will be visiting Florida State sometime after the 21st. Um didn't know that we necessarily needed a safety, but as good as the young man is, those are one of those ones that you just don't say no to. You also have the USC offensive lineman that I don't think comes here personally, um, but I've said that about other people, and they end up at Florida State. Uh, but I don't personally see him being a fit. Um, I don't see him really coming back toward Florida State. We were recruiting very heavily um, at the time, but now I don't think that he's that big of – a piece that we need, um, and that is USC's offensive lineman, uh, Jason Zandamella. So we will see exactly where that goes, um, but we also have a defensive tackle in uh, Jermaine Lowell. He announces that he's in the transfer portal from Louisville. I like him. I think that he's a definite want at Florida State with what he's been able to put together and who he is. And then you've got Colorado, um, not saying we're interested, but we have Colorado uh, cornerback 
Cromartie McLean, who announced that he's entering the transfer portal. We've got, and this is more of a, how do I say this? This is more of a troll than it is any of our wants on what I'm about to say. But you've got Miami's uh, transfer portal. Who has hit the transfer portal so far? There will be more. But so far, they've had defensive end, Najalik Kelly, uh, running back Citizen, quarterback Ja'Cory Brown, and running back Henry Parrish have all entered the portal. So they're in dire need of DBs already. They don't have the greatest wide receiver core. Um, now their running back room has the, just turned into almost nothing. So they're in a need for a lot. I, I don't know that Miami is going to be what a lot of people expected them to be based off of what we knew they had. We knew they were going to need to add some pieces from the transfer portal as far as DB and wide receiver goes, but now they need a defensive tackle. They need to add another defensive end. Um, they're good at linebacker. I'll give them that. Uh, they're probably good at offensive line. Maybe they need a left tackle. Um, but Miami has lost a lot of good pieces and will continue to lose pieces over the next week. It's not going away. Um, and then we've got our guy Atkins just doing every bit of his job. And people can believe what they want to, but I believe Peyton Joseph, who just decommitted from uh, Florida, which is a four-star a four -star offensive lineman, will be flipping to Florida State. That's 100% what I think happens uh, in the case of uh, Joseph. So we will see, but that's what I believe. Uh, Four-star offensive lineman uh, Max Buchanan set up his official visit with Florida State for June 7th. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six top offensive linemen that will be visiting Florida State in the month of June at one time. Four on different days and then six together on the same day. I imagine June 22nd through June 28th will be a big week for Florida State when it comes to offensive line recruiting and getting commits. Um, July 4th will be fireworks again. There will be plenty of gentlemen that are committing to Florida State in the month of July, especially on July 4th. So you're going to get to the point where we realize that Mike Norvell and the staff, they do things cohesive. They do things to where it's going to be that way for year in and year out. While people are bragging about March and February, uh, Florida State – takes over in July and June and July and parts of August. So I think everybody should be happy because we're recruiting at a high level where some would say we're not because they don't see it right now. Um, there's, let me see, there are quite a few uh, former Knowles um, that are there that were on campus today. Um, you had – Obviously, Jordan Travis was on campus today. You have uh, Trey Benson, who was on campus today. You also have a couple other guys, and I don't want to say names if, if I'm wrong about one of them. So I'm going to leave the other two off. But I know that the two that I named were definitely there. Uh, I'm going to bring Chip on real quick. Chip seems to be driving. Yep. <laughs> where, where are we headed to, Chip? We got a uh, big football break that's about to go on where they're breaking like a box of 2020 National Treasures, um, a box of Fallus, and stuff like that. It was like $150 a person per team. So it's a live event. Yeah, so I got to make sure I don't get stuck with like uh, the Arizona Cardinals. Understood. Completely understood. Well, Chip, while you're here, update us on some of the guys that will be coming uh, that has talked to you on Unconquered 850. The ones that have talked to me that are going to be at the tailgate, you have the trench monster, monster himself, Big Coop, Robert Cooper, that said he's coming through. Um, the man that holds the state record for sacks in a single season of 37 
and played four years for the Seminoles. Uh, Willie Jones Jr. is coming through. Um, and there's a bunch of them that said that they have said that they are going to try to come through. But, I mean, that's two. I'm sure you've got a ton of people coming through. Absolutely. Um, what well, we do, everyone should know, uh, P-Dub and Snoop, they always come. Um, there's a lot of surprises that don't want to be announced that will be there. Um, we do have some current players that once they get done with their battles in duty that will come over to the tailgate before um, the spring showcase is to start or before they're supposed to be in there. So we've got, I expect, quite a few gentlemen um, to show up over there for about 10 or 15 minutes at bare minimum um, from the current team. Um, we also have – there's two Knowles that are in the NFL currently that will show up as well. Um, they do not want me to name who they are because if I do, then Lot 5 will have more people in the stadium. So only the people that are watching this should know about it. Um, and hopefully you don't go and tell everyone that you know that it's a possibility of this person or that person. So it is what it is. Um, but if you are coming to the spring game and you have not bought your tickets yet, do so. Buy your spring game tailgate tickets. And even if you're not going to the spring game, we're going to have more fun outside anyway. I, I promise you that. Um, we've got – I'm going to try my best to get Jordan and Trey and all of them to come by. Um, I'm sure they will, but I'm going to do my best to make sure that they do. Um, usually a lot of the softball players show up, but unfortunately this weekend they're out of town, so we will not see them. Um, we do have a few of the uh, men's and women's basketball players that will show up as well. Um, so we've got quite a few people that are, that are going to show up. There's a lot of football players, former players that will be there. So uh, don't want people that are fans of the show – don't want people that are fans of all the things that we do to miss out. If you can be there, be there. Um, let me add James real quick. Chris, we also, uh, you and I got a little thing going that we're going to try to go viral and take Twitter over yeah. with a certain Samoan quarterback that we have we're trying to get take over WWE's Twitter and uh, make them acknowledge him. Yeah, that's going to be – I hope we get that done. That's going to be fun. And I have every – I expect that to go viral for sure if we make it work. James, who can you name that's coming to the tailgate as far as former players go? Well, I talked to Pete today, and Pete said, man, bump all that. I ain't got to be there till 4. I know the coaches, so I'm coming. Um, Snoop's coming. Um I think if Pete's going to try to bring Travis Miner, Tommy Polly, um, you know, those are guys that I've never met before. So I'm, I'm excited to um, meet those guys. Um, you know, outside of that, man, it's, it's kind of interesting, just like with the ticket situation, I'll know more tomorrow when we do the, um, the, what do you call the, the victory walk with the um, current players. I um, mean, you know, I'll talk to guys and um, tell them, you know, come check us out under lot five. Um, Pretty excited. Um, it's getting closer to that time. You know, sorry about being a little bit late, but um, I, my apparently I, I don't have a my my own, my setup doesn't work right now with this TV, so I wouldn't have been able to see you guys. So, got to do it old school with the phone. That's cool. Chip's doing it with the phone. He's going to do a break. So, it, however you show up, you show up. Um, I was talking about a lot of the guys that we're going to be showing up to the spring game as far as recruits and stuff like that. And it is a big bummer that we're not going to see Luke Crumman Hawk um, or Brock Glenn. It will be a DJU and Trevor Jackson, I guess, showdown in some way. Um, we do our spring showcase a little bit different than we used to, so maybe not so much. It'll probably be offense versus defense versus Garnet versus gold. So it's, it's a little bit different, um, even though the defense will probably be in one and the offense will be in the other. It's not – what we're used to back in the day where it was true twos against ones. It's just not the same, the same, how we do it anymore. Uh, I guess it eliminates and helps on injuries and other things, but spring games don't get to tell you a whole lot, but what are you looking for? What should fans be looking for in the spring game? 
that that does help. Depth, attitude, and effort. Um, you know, we can talk about vanilla, and I think people don't know what vanilla. People think vanilla means, oh, well, we're only going to run like one or two run plays. That's just not the case, sir. Like you're, you're going to run your your base package has quite a few plays in it. Um, so we're going to see that, but I want to see what the you know are the young guys are going to go out there and compete. Um, I want to see the energy level. I want that. That's really what I'm really more so what I'm I'm looking I'm looking at. It should be a uniform demonstration to where you don't you you know you see guys uh, performing in simulated um, in simulated combat or simulated um, constructs. So that's really what I'm more so looking forward to, and um, and just just energy, it's just really just vibes. That's basically all that comes down to. I mean. The way that Miami and UF run their, like you were just saying, run their scrimmages. Um, the way they run their 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 spring games is a little easier to break down and get a little bit more out of than ours. Um, so, but you know, from based on everything I've seen from practices that have multiple practices and stuff like that, our team is essentially set. So, Chip, what are you looking forward to the most this weekend? Uh, before uh, Luke and Brock weren't able to play, I was looking forward to a uh, big quarterback battle. Um, but honestly, I am looking forward to the, the running back duel and watching our running backs compete against each other and seeing, you know, what, you know, uh, the kid from Alabama can do. Uh, Seeing if LT is completely healed, and um, sing, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see if uh, Sam Singleton is going to be able to uh, show out this year. I'm definitely looking to see how much depth we have at the running back room because I feel like we have a lot. Um, I am wondering how much we're going to see Cam Davis. Um, I'm wondering how much we see Sam Singleton because I think it's going to be the first. Probably two quarters, you'll see a lot of Roy Dale Williams and a lot of LT. LT probably needs the, le- the least amount of looking at, but we probably do want to see where he's at after that small injury that he had last year. Um, so let's let's see where he's at. Uh, but I think that you'll see a lot of the young guys get to play. Like, I'm looking forward to seeing Camden Fryer. I'm looking forward to seeing Wheezy. I want to see all of those guys competing and show us what they can do as true freshmen because – this is supposedly, which I believe, um, the best true freshman class that we've had in quite some time. They're uber talented. They can, you know, take the top off of defenses. You got Landon Thomas that's going to be a big one that you're going to get to see. So there's a, there's a lot of pieces I think we're going to be excited to see. But I'm excited to see the depth of offensive line. Uh, where Where is Richards going to play? Um, who are they going to, you know, move in and out with Darius Washington? Does anybody take snaps other than Mo in the spring showcase? Stuff to that nature is what I'm looking for. That gives us a good idea of what whom's practicing on what um, come summer and also the winter. So looking forward to that. Uh, let me see. Are, is anyone intrigued? I don't know if you've seen this or not, but uh, Matthews from Texas A&M, the safety, put Florida State in his top two schools that he wants to go visit. Um, he's a transfer from Texas A&M. Um, damn good one. I just didn't know that we needed a safety, but I think he might be one of those ones that you don't say no to. Yeah, definitely. I mean, embarrassment of riches. Um, bring guys in and and see where they fit um, when it comes to that. But, you know, that means, you know, we still got to – I think one of the benefits, because people were – remember, people were complaining about how slow we were to hit the transfer portal during the fall. Um, but one of the benefits of being put on timeout and having your spring game so late, you get to really go back, look at what you want to do. How can we assess? How can we cover the weaknesses adequately? Where do we need to attack? All right. Do we need to – do we we not believe we can get another D tackle? We're going to have to be a 4-3 with a 3-4 look at times. So that means we got to make sure we have more – more we might need more safeties because we may be in a situation where or or you know my bad excuse me we can't find any more linebackers so we're definitely going to be 
we're going to, but we're going to need to bring a guy who can tackle a little bit more in the box, which means we need more bodies there. So that's kind of something that, you know, they get a chance to truly evaluate where they're at, what's in the portal and, you know, what's for us is for us. Cause I mean, we still got to get rid of quite a few bodies in order for us to be able to even take guys. So, um, but I think he's a, Again, him, the like you know, the D tackle from Michigan State, you find a way to make room for him. I think UCLA has a D tackle. If you know, again, some of this stuff is money issues, but um, but yeah. Are either one of you excited to see what these these two young um linebackers, uh, their development looks like in Nicholson and Omar Graham, um, and also prior, so three. Uh, I'm excited to see how much they've developed with what we can see out of a scrimmage, but. I think that we'll get to learn a little bit about them. I think we'll see their bigger body size, quicker responses to where they're supposed to be, stuff to that nature. Um, are y'all interested in seeing what our youth looks like at the linebacker position? Yeah. Um, you you want to see him run around. I mean, you've seen a little bit, even Murphy, um, you know, because Murphy's not necessarily a, 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 a grizzled vet. Um, going down to Ward and um, – Man, I can't. It was a. I can't remember the other kids. Is it Collins? Um, but you know, why did we? Not saying and it's a negative way, but like, hey, why do we? I want to know why we recruited guys like this. What are they yeah. doing? What are? What is it that they saw that you know we get to do? Like, do they cover well? Do they hit? Or do they bang? Like, those are the things that you want to you you want to see. You actually want to hear them make a play because like hearing that will give you a little bit more confidence in the depth going into. The fall, because um, again, that might be, that's one of our weaker spots. Yeah, Blake is somebody I'm I'm honest honestly excited to see play. He got to play in a tiny bit of uh, mop up duty, but um, you know I'm anxious to see is he going to be able to fly around the ball? I mean, how's his how's his pursuit going? Um, I'm, I'm, I mean the the kids the kids got a freaking athletic build. Like it looks like fucking mini Thor. So I'm anxious to see what they can do, especially after a full spring of being under uh, Storm's tutelage. Absolutely. I'm also looking forward to seeing like Conrad Hussey as well, because that one play that he had against Virginia Tech against the running back, that's that's the type of hitting that we're used to at Florida State. He brought a, a pretty good you know jolt to the team um, in that play. Not that we really needed one, but, you know, when we start getting comfortable with the lead, we start getting comfortable with how we're playing, and he comes out and just makes a huge play and knocks the running backs, you know what, in the dirt. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of where the young guys were last year versus where they are now. So that's something that I'm looking forward to. Getting to see a lot of the spring stuff as far as our scrimmages, as far as practice, I have a good idea. But they're going to want to show out in front of people. You know what I mean? That they're gonna want people to realize, hey, this is Conrad Hussey, or I'm, you know, y'all are gonna know my name for years to come, not just, you know, that one player, this player, whatever. Um, Chris, one thing we haven't touched on is the wide receiver battle. Who is gonna step up and be that dude? If I had to guess, it would be Malik Benson. Yeah. Yeah, I also think that people just, you know, I've seen some of the stuff, but I see, I think some of that because I've seen guys kind of backtrack a little bit. I think some of it was just for, I, I hate to say just for clicks or whatever, but just to get people talking. But like in 2022, our DBs didn't create get much separation. Our defense was the top 15 ranked defense. Everybody bitched about our defense and saying that it wasn't really that good, even when they were prov- proving that they were good. Um, moving into the next season, those guys into that season, those guys that could not move in the spring ended up being Johnny Wilson, you know, guys that we were looking forward to uh, coming to 2023 season. Same thing happened in, sp- in the spring. We couldn't really move the ball. Same thing this time. Like our DBs are just very, very, like, our DBs are talented. Um, yeah. They can run. They're tall. They just they have great hips. It's um, one. Of, it's a. It's really what people want. So, um, I think in the in the wide receiver room, the guys who have to step up, or you know, they got it. They get one. They get that today, which is pretty good. Tomorrow's just a walkthrough, but 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 Saturday's the last time where guys can make a true splash. And you just need those. And you guys. remember like uh, 
James, okay. you remember a couple of years ago that it almost felt like DB wise that was our Achilles heel. Yeah. And now um, and now it's it's an abundance of riches. Now we got some bona fide studs out there. Exactly, man. Um again, it's just it's really easy for people to um you know Again, it's, it's I don't understand it. Like, again, if I was, it's kind of like you're poor and then you became rich and then you're just like always feeling like you're going to be poor. Like you're one step away from being poor again. And you have to critique these things and you don't get the chance to enjoy it. Um, I get it. I, I think we're in a situation where I'm not going to be overly critical of stuff. Um, my biggest thing right now is what we have to continue to do is a better is a better job of educating our current players, showing it on the field so that so that the, the, the future gets to see and envision themselves in there. Um, one of the things that I, I was looking, I was deleting, you know, I have actually a shit ton of space on my iPhone. It's like a computer. But I was going back through deleting videos, and I saw this video. And unfortunately, it was the Jacksonville State game. But remember they made – that was right when they did the turn off the thing and the light show in the tunnel. Like, that was the season. And my son, I think he was – he had to be eight. No, I don't know how it was. Eight. Yeah, probably eight. He's walking out the tunnel, and I, I changed it to this music from Belly that I like, and he's walking out. And when you walk, right before you walk to the state, there's a thing that says um, where stars are made. And we have to get these guys visualizing themselves being the next Malik Benson, being the next DJU, being the next this. And, um, you know, we have a great opportunity because we have some top prospects and some top um, some top commits um, one of which wasn't coming, he's coming now, um, that are going to be there for a few days that we got to continue to indoctrinate. I think that's really what the spring game should be about. That's why I want fans to come. It's the opportunity to indoctrinate. You. It's our it's our Easter. It's our Florida State spring um, solstice. Like We need to make sure we indoctrinate the fan base and those who want to be here um, by putting on a good product but also just having a great time. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to drop a couple of this so people that I did tell you there would be former players. Some of the current players are supposed to come by. Um, Michael Offord hopefully gets to come out like he wants to um, and check us out for a minute. Um, everybody, just don't bombard someone. That's all I ask. They'll be there longer if everybody doesn't come at them at once. So try to do us a favor there and not scare the shit out of somebody and run them off. Um you also may have a couple of the position people come out as well from what I've gotten told. Uh, but who I know for sure who's going to be uh, 100% there, you're going to have, uh, obviously, James is going to be there. I'm going to be there. CJ, CJ. From you're going to have Chip from Unconquered 850. You're going to have George and Jen from, um, oh, listen to me, Renegade, the Renegade Report. I always want to say Rundown because it's the name of the show. By the way. Jen is is legitimately is like really tall. Like Jen's very tall. Like it's it's crazy. I thought it was, I thought I thought she was lying, but no, she's tall. Well, I kind of had a feeling when she was standing up on that one episode, and her head was that close to the top of the door. She was telling the truth. Um, but he's got to pick up. That's right. He's got to pick up his rendezvous, so he should come by the tailgate. As far as Michael Offord goes, unless. Jen already gave it to him, and I don't think that's happened yet. But anyways, um, you're also going to have uh, Vince and Ron from Garnet and Old. Um, I pray to God I'm not missing anybody. Um, I think that's it as far as media goes. Um, I'm hoping that the people that all ask me this question, there is a gentleman that's below me that makes statements that he likes to stir the pot. And he started a pot this morning or this early afternoon that fucking had me. I, I've never got that many messages in all of my life. Never. Not once. And I didn't even know what the hell they were talking about because I didn't see it. I was not on Twitter. I did not see it get dropped. So I didn't know what was going on. Um, but everybody's like, hey, Chris, are you, are you going on the Ops channel too? And I was like, what the fuck are y'all talking about? And they're like, you know, the weirdo, this guy, that guy. I was like, I said, who the fuck went on the show? What are we talking about? Oh, man, James is on the show right now. I was like, 
that's got to be old bullshit. And I clicked on the link, and I was like, oh, fuck. This is a recording. This happened either earlier or last night. And I didn't watch it because I'm like, I, I, I don't know what's going on. I will find out as much as I can. Um, and I'm not good at answering for other people. So I'm going to give James the opportunity to tell people why he was on the other channel um, with with whom y'all all, and I consider an op. Trust me, I do. Um, so I'll let James explain why he was over there. Um, so, one, it's a it's a complicated situation. It wasn't just one. So um, a lot of, I, you know, obviously there's only one video, um, but there was a lot of um, text message exchanges through other, I guess people call it ops, um, other things like that. You know, first and foremost, I can fight. So like, I would, if, if, if it's aggravation, there are some things that I don't agree with, but I you know I come from gang culture so like I don't really go back and forth with a lot of these people too much especially knowing me I don't like being mad so like when I get mad there's like no other it, it, bad shit happens when I get mad and I don't have people to hit on the football field anymore but what happens is is as a dad as a coach as a mentor as a friend I defend people one and first and foremost if anybody has a question about anything that I do, is it, if it's presented in a respectful manner, I will answer you. Like I answer DMs. Like I ain't a well. I I get big black guy with dreads. I talk about some of the things in the past. You saw the videos of what I've done in the past as well. It, just ask me. I'll tell you. I have no problem. But I had a kid who's being bombarded for him trying to make sure that he makes the best life decision. And he's a child that doesn't have media training, even though he is very good because he was in the FSU spaces the other day and he did great, but he's being hit with stuff and he hasn't decommitted. He hasn't hit it on this. And a lot of people don't understand why he did things the way he does things and like again so first i'll put tramel jones went on a visit to the university of florida yesterday he also went to the university of florida last week i talked to him when i was in the dominican republic he when he was there him jamie and drake the south florida express guys went down there well drake's not south florida express but he came down um because he has he has a good relationship with florida they did a good job they presented some. They presented some things. They've been trying to get Tramel to visit since January. Tramel Jones is a kid who hasn't been to very many schools. Like I mean, a lot of people aren't even given the count that you know how many visits or have you have you heard about him taking? If it's not with seven on seven, he doesn't go. He doesn't even camp like that. So he went down and did it, and it was reported. And, you know, it was reported kind of not laissez-faire, but, like, it wasn't given much context with why he was doing it. And I don't – I ain't mad at him. Kid got hit a little bit. I was asked, hey, man, you know, people are asking us to do these things. Can you help – can you help communicate this the way you can communicate this? So I went on the show. We also talked about spring ball and, and some other different things, but – the main crux of it was talking about Tramel Jones, Jamie French, and this. For here's the thing: the people on my platform aren't the ones going after the kid. <laughs> so, um, the people on this platform, you would know about this stuff if you listen to this. You would know about these things if you listen to my show. And something that I made sure that I I kept insinuating is that if you only subscribe to 247, you only subscribe to a lot of these other places, you wouldn't even know I coached that man during high school. Because they never talk about the inside that man that Florida State has and why they're in these battles. And there's just a lot of stuff that's just objective. Uh, you know, it's they don't have the inside because they don't see the kids every day. And it's when it comes down to that, like, if 
I, and I put out a tweet and I sent it to Chris. And it's the truest thing. There's two things that tweet and then anything with, um, not Wyatt Earp. I can't think of his name. I, I, when I be wanting to say names, like it, 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 but Tombstone, um, with the gun slinger. Anyways, he's like, um, you know, if I consider you my friend, I, if, excuse me, if I consider you my enemy, I will walk through the gates of heaven and I will slap God to punch you in the face. But if I consider you my friend, I will go down and I will punch the devil just to get you out. Doc Holiday, thank you, Young Lee. I don't have a lot of close friends. Toby Bullock, the head coach at Mandarin High School, is literally my son's godfather. I will whip your ass for Toby Bullock. My number one concern, even though it's $1,440 $1, the Wednesday before Black Friday, is what the coaching stipend is for Duval County. I, do, I don't do it for the money. I do it because I absolutely love a guy. That's my man. And I care about Mandarin High School. That's it. I, just like I care about the media group, just like I care about Chris and his business ventures, just like a lot of these different things. If so, with Tremel Jones being a part of Mandarin High School, I'll do whatever I got to do to make sure that people aren't bashing or getting a bad miss, or getting a misunderstanding because y'all haven't been on the phone calls that I've had to be on for the last two weeks about some of this stuff, not just from from Tremel, but from you know miscommunication, people saying this. People saying everything except for what those guys are saying. And, you know, so it was cleared up. Like, and it was a good thing. T TJ asked very respectful questions, and it was different stuff. If you don't listen to it, you don't have to listen to it. You're going to tell, I'm going to tell you truth. It wasn't about the Sporadics crew, it wasn't about the Den Media Group crew. Y'all listen. You know who doesn't listen? It's people over there who don't fuck with us for whatever fucking reason. <laughs> so, and again, I'm not, and I'm again, I'm not insinuating that they're trying to. Like, I don't think he's trying to do that stuff. He had, and TJ reached out because upon from them, like, hey man, I, I just want some clarity. What's going on with this? So I went in, and I did that. I did talk to somebody from Two Four Seven, talk to somebody from On Three, talk to somebody from Rivals. A lot of people that I typically don't talk to, to get to the bottom of the stuff. So like, at the end of the day, like shit. <laughs> you want you what, what my man said a few me you want me on that wall like you want me doing this because what happens when people take it too far and that 17 year old doesn't understand that twitter's not real life and then he's just like because i went to games not the fucking 17 times that i've come over to florida state by myself the ten thousand dollars that he spent out of his father spent out of his own pocket to come to FSU games, not getting anything under the table, not chasing the bag, not doing all those things. They can't communicate that. I can. But if I don't communicate that and people keep thinking what they do and some people keep acting a whole donkey, now you actually do. It's a um, self-fulfilling prophecy. Because you've been burnt in the past, but by the Travis Hunters or who's the, whoever the kid that ended up going to Ole Miss. And actually, out of all of them, Travis Hunters is the only one who's had success. But, shit, we've lost four games since then. But, again, that's what it was. And then talking about everybody's like Jamie going to Ohio State, clearing that up. Like, he might. But I tell you this, it, Ohio State got a fucking t fuck ton of work to do. Texas, LSU, Florida State. But, again, do you know why these kids are even considering Florida State? It's because of the ambassador that I that that not me that I, that you guys that listen to me that you guys show on social media and do these different things that allow kids that are directly connected to me to say like yo, Coach James hasn't scored a touchdown in damn near twenty years, and people still go to his. He still has a thousand people show up to a tailgate. You know, some of y'all bitch like it was because I ain't have Fillet McNon there. But most of y'all were really, really cool. I can take the the, the dumbassery. Most seven, but I'm on. But but as I love to say, I've waited my. I've waited since the quote. 
I'm about to put it. Mike Gundy, I will say to Mike Gundy, quote, damn near every day for a whole year. I'm a man. I'm 40. I can take that stuff. I just don't like when Jits have to go through some things and it makes the process not fun because I got to enjoy my process. I had a ball. When I took off five visits. I understand. I could, And I've told y'all the stories. You know how many times I committed? I committed five times. I took five visits. They're fun. There's beautiful women. There's food. There's, there's liquor. There's all kinds of stuff. They're very convincing. But, you know, that being said, you know, it's we still, as long as we, I'll, I'll end it with this, to be honest with you. And this is what we can do as a fan base. All we got to do is worry. All we got to do is do right by the kids. As long as we continue to do right by the kid, we ain't got nothing, we ain't got nothing to worry about. That and the fact that they're about to fire fucking Billy. So, and they suck. So it's like, again, it's just logic gets thrown out the window when it comes to this. Now, did I rep my brand? I will rep my brand wherever the fuck I'm at. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just me. I rep, I, I wear an MFTK hat in front of governors and generals. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm going to be me regardless. But at the end of the day, it wasn't just, hey, man, let me, because let me go spend my Wednesday evening um, away from my boys to do something that I don't get any benefit from. Like, I don't get paid for it. I don't get anything. The only benefit I got was that hopefully it cleared the air for what people think about an incredible young man from an incredible family. And guess what's coming up um, after that? We got another Tramel Jones coming after him. That's going to be, that's a freshman coming in. And we got another Jamie French that's coming in. I, I'm, I shit you not. We got high hopes for these just coming in. And we're going to continue to teach them how to be great young men so that we continue to get more great Seminoles. So that's, I mean, I don't know if you got any more questions for that, but hopefully that wraps it up. Like, I mean, shit, y'all could have inboxed me and told me it would have been a dope ass. I mean, no, y'all know they don't. The, those people who listen to the other stuff don't know. No, they, I think, I think the biggest, the reason that I asked him to clear this up is because. There's a lot of people in here that are agreeing and now understanding, and that's cool. I got no problem with that. Uh, now that the air is, uh, I'm cleared on that on that part. But all I ask is next time, let me know what's happening because a lot of these people that are in here, cool now, um, asking me some really uh, um, imagination type questions. Uh, is James leaving the show and going to? Um, uh, double dicks, and I'm saying what they literally wrote. And I'm like, no, no, man, I don't think so. I said, well, how come you didn't know it was happening? Because that's how I answered. I answered it truthfully. I didn't know it was happening. Um, I said, he doesn't tell me every time he pisses either. So I, I don't know everything that's going on in someone else's life at all times. And then people start asking me questions as, am I this? Am I that? Um, are you selling out? And, and that would, to me, it's insinuating that. You're trying to say that people that are with me have sold out on whatever reason. And I'm like, wait a minute. I don't, I'm not, I can't jump to a conclusion. I can tell you that I am not going on no op shows, but I don't wear many hats. I, I wear Spiratics' hat. I, that's it. That's all I got. Um, and that's cool. But no, it, it's not a sellout thing. It's, I don't know how else to explain that. Yeah, I was bombarded with a shit ton of questions about why this or that happened, and I'm like, well, first off, what happened? Because I don't, I don't know what we're talking about. What's bad? What was there something said? I haven't obviously watched any portion of it at this point, and I'm like, what, what happened? And then I don't get any responses from those things, and then I've got, hey man, did you know um, this was happening and this and that and the other? I'm like. No, I, same way that I can't tell you what Chip's doing today. I can't tell you what George is. I can't tell you what any of the people are doing today right now. Nope, sure can't. But I said, let um, let either write him and ask him directly, or you're going to have to take that. I don't know yet. I said, but yeah, I, I mean, yeah. like, so what happened was, I mean, you know, the, the, the real part is, um, shit, I didn't know what was happening until. Until, like, 
I think I think we talked like right before, either right before or right after Mark Rogers. So it was like a quick thing, like because again, Tremel didn't Tremel didn't decide to take the visit until like Tuesday evening. Two four seven, I believe, dropped it in there because I don't subscribe to two four seven. So this is when I found out about this stuff. So somebody told me they dropped it in the message boards on Wednesday morning. And so, like, it wasn't like, uh, you know, like, like for example, when I do my dope boys, I typically know at least a week, maybe even two weeks in advance. It wasn't like it was a bunch of advertising. We did it 30 minutes, two things. And um, the, re the reality is, you know, like I said, I always tell people I don't really care where you get your information from. Um, as long as you enjoy it, I tell people don't even get into spats or whatever that you don't even really know about. Like, you don't know, you may know, if you don't like somebody, then that's your right to not like them. Not you, Pri, I'm just saying. If a fan doesn't like something, then that's dope. But, like, you know, it's, you know, there's some people who, tell it, again, you listen to only 247, you think that the kid's about to flip, is on flip watch. And it's not even to that, it's nowhere near to that extent. Um and, you know, like I was hearing stuff like, like again, one of the things that I heard that really, because I'm, again, you know, I know a lot of people get sensitive when you talk about this kind of stuff, but I, I, I don't know how to tell you this, guys. I'm not white. I'm black. Um, I'm also a father. I'm also from the inner city. Um, I also played. I grew up without a dad. So I know a lot of people believe that most black players either don't come up with a dad or their parents are money hungry. And one, just like I, like I love um, John Cromenhawk to death, Luke Cromenhawk's dad. I love, I love hanging around because I didn't grow up with a father. I love talking to and being around good people. I think are good fathers, especially older guys. Um, I um, Tremel Jones's dad is a phenomenal dad. And what really, not bother me, but what really kind of made me be like, you know what, I have you asked me to do this, dope. Is that people saying his dad is chasing the bat and he's money hunting. And that's like the furthest from the truth. Like, this is a guy who works really, really hard, makes good money. <laughs> like, yeah. like he, his house is dope as fuck. Um, but it's, he's, yeah, it's just more so one of those things where I wanted to make sure that nobody, he, just saying this again, and I, I don't want people painting him like Cecil Newton got painted. And then we got a Cam Newton situation right. where he's angry at the world because people thought his dad, or even like, I don't know if Jaden Rashada's dad's chasing the bag or not, but like people think about Jaden Rashada's dad. You know, th those are the things. And again, like I said, if it was just, if it were people on our platform that were, that I believe that were doing this, I'd have just been like, all right, man, hey, y'all cut that shit out. <laughs> y'all know what the fuck you're talking about. I right. could do that, but it's, I, it's not the media group people. It's not sporadic people. And I'm not here. Yeah, I'm not saying that people who listen to it's that's just where it was coming from because those guys had the questions. I haven't gotten hit with a Tramel Jones question personally because everybody knows I know Tramel Jones is I, I know Tramel Jones. So like, but that's it. I, I you know I think now, I am I leaving? Hell no. Unless Chris firing me or something. No, let me actually let me <laughs> let me stop back. I will be honest with you. Everybody has a price. Now, they want to give me $2 million a year, $2 million annually to come on and do some updates. I'll do whatever, man. Like, shit, that's a lot of money to turn down um, for something that, you know, <laughs> I'll even shoot Freddie some money for his movie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but at the end of the day, I, I again, you, you can't follow me and then imagine me working for somebody. I literally say every day, I don't like working. Like, I like what I do. I can roll out, well, outside of right now, I can roll out of my bed, turn my computer on, make content, and bring in um, six figures um, annually because for whatever reason, people listen to me. So, like, me working for somebody would be, uh, I, I work with somebody, like, I right. work with Chris. And we have other things that at least I know of that we're still working towards to get, towards each other. I'm not finna like split that. It's only one time that I've split away from something that I started, and that's because that guy talked to me like he was crazy, and I was gonna whoop his ass. And I don't yeah. want to have to go whoop somebody's ass over something that, you know, is 
ain't that bad, ain't that big of a deal. Right. No, I, look, I think I think the confusion was was known and it's it's relevant because people know how I feel about that particular person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and I wasn't I was telling people as best as I could, look, it's not it's not that deep. It's it's probably this or it's probably I, I just didn't know. I was guessing. Um but I got I started getting hit with bullshit that I'm gonna do these things and I'm gonna sell out and I'm gonna do this with this guy now. And I was like, man, look, I don't know why he went on there yet. I said, I, I haven't got to talk to him, don't know none of that. Um, but don't call me a sellout. So immediately what I tweeted was taken as I'm going after one specific person. And no, I'm trying to clear it. I'm not. I feel how I feel about who I feel. Um, I've heard too many stories. Freddie's told me too much. Uh, Quayshon, when he was here, told me too much. Michaela's told me too much. Um, so, no, it's there's times, though, that people have to understand you're going to have to be kosher whether you want to be or not. Like, people brought up, yeah, you got good with him when uh, y'all um, did Coach Coop show together. No, man, that's somebody else's show. I can't control who comes on there. But I was getting, you know, that same thing. Like, well, you started it when you did this. No, no, no. No, I didn't. I didn't even know that man was going to be on there for one. For two, I can't stop other people from doing their show or, or, or doing their thing or talking on the kid's behalf or helping. A, that has nothing to do with me. I, that's not who I am. I can tell everybody this with all truthfulness. I don't agree with that particular person based off of what I know, based off of people that I trust far more than I do anyone else um, on based off of their, their situations with that particular person. Y'all have heard me call out 247. You've heard me call out on three. Josh Payton in particular. You, you've heard me call those people out. And that's based off of the same thing. Y'all are saying some shit about some kids that you, you don't know. And it pisses people off. So, and no, I did not know because nobody told me that James went on there to talk about Tremel till James told me that's what he was on there for. Everybody was making it like they had this fucking whatever show. And I'm like, okay, I'll find out. Don't know. And then to find out that James is going over there to speak on the behalf of a young man that plays at a school that he coaches at and people are rubbing his name through the mud and he's trying to clear it up. Okay. See, that sounds more like what would really be happening. So it's, I don't know. People's imaginations went extremely far, um, far left. And I know a lot. I had some credible people ask me, hey, man, everything good? Y'all good? I'm like, as far as I know, you know something I don't? No, 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 no. I was like, oh, okay. Well, then, no, as far as I know, man, we're all right. But it did. It stirred up some shit. And I'm just like, I, I guess that means we can't move at all. You can't do nothing. But um, it, it is what it is. I appreciate uh, you clearing it up. I pre I guess Chip had to go. Um, he was on his break. Um, is there anything that you feel that maybe some of the fans that are coming the day of to buy tickets for the spring tailgate, is there anything that they might need to bring just in case they're waiting until the day of? Ice and Chaser. That's it. Um, I mean, the food is the food. I mean, we got like shit, eight, 20 slabs of ribs um, or more. Actually, I don't remember. Freddie told me something. This is a shit ton of the ribs, though. Uh, we got burgers. I think we got plates. I, to be honest, yeah, napkins is always a key. Nap yeah, always napkins. Bring some napkins, cups. I mean, just things like that. I mean, if it's something that you – I tell people this. If it's something that you truly enjoy, that you know you're going – that you, like, will eat a lot of, you know, you know, maybe bring a bag of chips. Maybe bring some some dessert. Desserts are always a play. Like, you know, go find something that – like some Publix cookies or something like that, you know, stuff like that. But we – um, but, no, nah, we should be good. I mean, if you drink – actually, I'm going to be honest. I'm not buying beer. So, you know, y'all go – if you want some beer, bring beer. I'm sure people will share it with you. You'll be like, I got you on liquor. 
I'm not buying no more beer. That experiment is I failed miserably twice. I don't like doing nothing I'm not good at. So, um, but yeah, so y'all, I mean, that's, that's the thing. That's the thing that we can, um, that we can get, man. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming on. I'm going to give these people a little bit of a rant. Um, I will see y'all Saturday, maybe Friday. I don't know yet. Um, but I will see y'all soon. Uh, Till next time, James, I, I'll, I'll see you at the spring game. I, at least right, hit me up because we still got to talk about I want to get some, see where we at on the other thing that we're working on. Works for me. All right, brother. Yeah. Well, for those that wanted it cleared up, I guess that's as clear as it's going to get. I still didn't know until he just said all of it. So now that I know where he stands, now that I know what's going on, and you do too, it is what it is. We're at, we're at. Um, but I think everybody needs to quit freaking out. Um, but at the same time, I hope to see everybody at the the spring game. I hope to see you at the spring game tailgate. Um, like I said, I don't know how much I'm going to be in one spot. I got a lot of places that I'm supposed to go through. So if you don't see me somewhere, don't freak out. Just hit me up on social media, and you might have to come to me. That might be very close. So we will – all be around, um, but definitely hit me up if you need to find me. Um, I think that everybody that's coming down on Florida State, uh, as far as the spring showcase being on 420, um, it's you know weeks at, a week after all the other people did it. Everybody's got their narrative that they want to spin the same way that there was all these narratives put out about other things. So I'm tired of big media. I don't know if y'all are. I'm sick of it. I'm I'm absolutely over all of the the clickbait bullshit that gets put out, um, lying on kids and saying that they're doing this and they're going to flip, and especially when it comes to the guys that you're supposed to be able to trust. Uh, if if Own Three as a company does it, cool. But if Wilt Phone does it, not cool. Um, if Two Four Seven does it as a company, this one dude wrote an article. All right, cool. Dude didn't have shit else to say. But if specific people go around spreading bullshit, lies, and rumors. I'm based off of loyalty. I am loyal to who's loyal to me. That's how I was raised. That's how I grew up. If someone is your enemy, they're my enemy. If they're your friend, we're friends. That's how it works. So outside of what anybody may or may not believe, I don't just hate on other media for no reason. I don't knock them. I don't call them out for zero reasons. I only do it when there's reason to, and no one else does. No one else goes and says that, Hey man, that's fucked up. It's wrong. You shouldn't say that. Um, it's, it's fucked up that someone, um, including James, it's fucked up that someone has to go clear a kid's name anywhere. James is a better person than I am. At, I, you couldn't fucking hold a gun to my head and make me go on that son of a bitch is nothing. And that's because of what I know. Not what I dislike, not because of this, nothing. Just because of what I know. And I know some shady ass shit has been done. And I know some really weird shit's been done. And I don't, it's not a, oh, I was told by somebody I just trust. I literally have proof. Physical proof that this shit has happened. So, but I, again, I don't wear many hats. I'm all about protecting mine. And I'm all about being... Um, for Florida State and telling the truth about Florida State and who wants to come to Florida State and why it's not a deeper situation than what it is. Um, it, it, I can't be swayed. I, I'm going to put it like that. It's, you, it's not going to happen. So anybody that wrote me thinking that I'm ever going to sell out on anything, you got me fucked up with somebody else. It's not me. I won't sell. I, I won't sell out for no amount of money. I won't sell out for no amount of fame. I won't sell out for shit. If I die exactly what I am today, I know that my grandfather, myself, and my father will be proud. My wife, most importantly, will be proud of who I am. So I give two fucks about what other people really do. I move a certain way. 
I'm not going to sit here and tell you I move better than everybody else. But I'm damn sure going to tell you I'm competitive at it. And there ain't a whole lot of people that can fuck with me on it. But at the same time, I'm no one's keeper. I, I don't know everything about everyone. I don't keep tabs on people. I don't own anyone. But at the same time, I know that I got some loyal guys. I know it's nothing like that. I knew that that was barking up a different tree. But you got enough people saying something, you got to at least ask the question. Um, I gave him the opportunity to answer it the way that he wanted to. He answered it. Um, hopefully it clears it up for people. Hopefully everyone knows where he stands. Um, I think that we do. So uh, please don't write me any more questions about it. I would appreciate it just to be – Left alone, if you have any questions, you heard the man yourself. Ask him. Don't be scared to ask him. He said ask him. So if you got other questions that he may not have answered, ask him. Everybody felt comfortable with asking me. So be comfortable to ask him. He invited it. Uh, with that being said, if you're a Florida State fan and you don't come to Spear Addicts to check out what's going on and you don't pay attention to what we talk about over here, tell the truth. Stay positive. Don't get into the drama and the crybaby ass shit. Um, and it's the best show that there is, and I don't I don't go around saying that. I don't. I'll let all of y'all go around and say it for us. As long as that stays true to you, that's what matters. I'm gonna tell you, I ain't gonna change. And other leopards, they don't change their fucking spots neither. People will show you who they are. So it is what it is. I I don't think. Any Anything went wrong. I don't think there was any ill will. I don't think any of that was the case. Um, doing, I've gotten myself into some trouble doing favors from, for some other people before. Um, and that's on my case. I'm not saying that that's what took place on that uh, with James. I am just telling you the truth. Uh, you, when, you, when you care about people, you'll do some shit for them. That's the way it works. But if we read too deep in this shit, we're going to get lost into a, a wormhole of things that may not be anywhere near the truth. So I ask everybody, make sure that you get back here. I've got a lot of content that's going to drop after Saturday. I mean a shit ton of content that's going to drop. I've got some really cool interviews that are set up. Um, there's going to be some great news that breaks on Monday as far as we go. Um we will see y'all very shortly. I appreciate everybody that's going to be there. I appreciate everybody that can't make it and would love to be there. Um, we'll have enough videos. Hopefully we can make it feel like you at least was there for a minute. You know, give you some peace that, you know, Knowles went and held it down for you. Um, appreciate uh, Carrie, go Knowles, uh, for the $9.99 donation. Don't sweat the small stuff. Chris, I don't sweat nothing small. But I knocked the shit out of everything big. Don't sweat nothing small, but I knocked all the big shit down. I want people to have their opportunity to answer what is being asked. Now, how that gets done is on them, but I I didn't bombard him with it, I promise. I asked him before he came on the show. I said, hey, you going to be cool if I ask you this question? Because a lot of people are fucking wanting to know. And he said, absolutely, I, I'm, I'm fine to do so. Um, tell them to ask me. I'm like, well, I figure if we put it on the show, you get it out there, everybody knows where you stand. So um, it is what it is, guys. Uh, we got a hell of a spring showcase coming up Saturday. Um, I'm worried about Florida State. I'm not worried about all this other shit. Could care less. Uh, I am who I am. I am my own person. And I can tell you when a lion gets hungry, that motherfucker's going to eat. So – We'll see what happens in the very near future. Y'all have a good one. Go Knowles.